Welcome everybody, I'm Terry Bosio, and uh, if you don't know about that, uh, I can't help you. And now we're gonna get to the questions. So the first one I've got up here is what would be your dream band lineup in terms of surrounding yourself with your favorite musicians, current or from history? It would be Miles Davis on trumpet, Wayne Shorter on uh, saxophone, Joe Zawinul on keyboards, Miroslav Vitus on bass, and I think Manolo Badrena uh, on percussion. He's just brilliant, brilliant feel. So uh, that's kind of my idea of uh, a dream band, a, a fantasy band. The next question I have here is, as a time of change and emotional journey, what was the process like to leave Zappa and see Vinnie Kaliuta join? Frank, I don't know, we started playing something that uh, was more, more of a comedy piece and uh, I, just, I guess I just wasn't putting feeling into it. And Frank kind of got the impression that uh, I didn't want to be there anymore, which really isn't true. But uh, he said, step into my office and kind of like a good father, he said, I think it's time you go off and do your own thing. You got this record deal here now, you know, start there and blah, blah, blah. It was something he felt, but it was more like, uh, you know, like a good father kicking you out of your home or, you know, like kicking a, a father bird, kicking the younger bird out of the nest. Because I, I probably wouldn't have had the guts to leave Frank. So uh, that was a big deal. And then, of course, my ego was thinking, well, you know, I'm such a main part of the band and I've done, you know, I'm such a highly developed personality and part of Frank's expression, he's gonna have a hard time finding somebody to fill my shoes. And two weeks later, Vinnie Kaliuta took the bus with his yellow Gretsch drum set uh, and got the gig with Zappa. And uh, evidently he had uh, a copy of the Black Page and had learned how to play it. So uh, he was in uh, you know, a good position to steal the gig right there. And uh, Vinny, of course, is one of my favorite drummers. He's just a brilliant musician. And um, I love all the stuff he's done. Uh, same with Chad Wackerman um, after. Mr. Lindsay McDonald, thank you for your question. Um, what is one of Terry's favorite Zappa songs to play? Well, I got the Black Page back, uh, memorized it when I started to do duets with uh, Chad Wackerman. So both of us knew the tune and had played it. It's like uh, going back and <laughs> starting all over again and relearning the thing and hoping that some of the motor memory comes back. But that is a great tune, and uh, I love playing it as uh, solo drums uh, or with another drummer or with a band, which I've done as well. I would say that's, uh, that's one of the great songs that, uh, that Frank has written. And, you know, I was there when he wrote it, and it was kind of written for me and my, my drum set at the time. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm very proud to have been able to do that. So now we've got one here. Let's see what part of Italy am I from? My grandfather on my father's side came from uh, a little town called Lavagna uh, in the north of Italy, uh, up in the hills uh, behind Genoa. And uh, my grandfather on my mother's side uh, was from Tuscany, a, a little town which he just said was, a, <laughs> I can't say that on the air. Uh, but at any rate, it wasn't much. There was a church there and something else, and uh, it was called um, Marginona, I believe. I was in Via Reggio one time, and uh, the promoter, we were having dinner, and I mentioned this to him, and he said, oh, it's just a couple of villages over this way. So I guess it's near Via Reggio, but inland. Uh, this is from Noah Sturgill. Hey Terry, I'm in my early 20s. I've been playing drums for 14 years and I don't know what to practice at the moment. How do you approach what to practice when you're stuck in a rut? Ah, well, what would you like to be able to do? Maybe just think about that and then, uh, you know, back up and see what you need to do in order to accomplish accomplish that, that goal. Like for me, I was just fooling around waiting for uh, a student in, in a little studio uh, room I was going to teach in. And the student didn't show up or was late for an hour or something. So I just started doing um, things between my, there was a ride cymbal and a, a floor tom. And I started doing uh, 
I guess the last two beats of a triplet, an ostinato with my left hand. So, pop, 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 pop. And uh, I was doing that, and I just started to do, okay, play on the first beat of the triplet, then the second beat of the triplet, and then the third beat, and then two beats, and see where those fit, do the permutations in order to get independence to be able to uh, switch between the permutations and make up something that's an independent sort of rhythm to the, the ostinato, which is just the last two beats of, uh, of the triplet. So, um, you know, I started fooling around with that and uh, I came out of the room a little while later and some people were hanging around outside the door and they said, they were expecting two people to come out and they said, oh, I thought you had another guy in there and was jamming like two people were jamming. And I thought, I'll keep that in mind and put it in my little brown bag of Bozio tricks. And I got, you know, I just went off into ostinato land and uh, began, you know, doing them with other limbs and just using the same process. And I'm always finding things I don't know how to do that I'd like to do, uh, that I find uh, a way to, uh, to achieve. If I just spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes to an hour a day, you know, that kind of consistency really is where I got uh, so much done. If you're a rudimental guy uh, and you'd know only the first, whatever, 26 rudiments in, in uh, you know, that have been popular for, for many, many years now, if not centuries, there uh, are some advanced uh, kinds of uh, uh, rudiments you can find online. And uh, you might be able to, you know, find something interesting by practicing them. For me, uh, the Latin guys, the African guys that I've played with have some kind of a feel that is just not on the grid like we Westerners uh, are locked to. And so a lot of this has to do with two and three, and I suggest somebody like uh, Efrain Toro for learning how to do this, or Alex Acuna. Beautiful guys and, and will uh, open your mind in terms of uh, being able to get some of that kind of a feel into your playing. Um, it's not wrong, but it's not perfect right, you know, because perfect right sounds like a machine and who cares, right? But uh, the way these guys have that, you know, you could say it's a swing. If you think of the jazz years, you know, you're playing four beats on the ride cymbal to keep jazz time, and you're going, you know, dum, da, da, dum, dum, da, da. So on two and on four, the last 16th note of the last triplet of those two beats, right, and where that falls between a 16th note or a triplet is what defined immediately a drummer's personality. Like Elvin Jones does it this way, Tony, Tony Williams does it more this way, almost like a straight eighth note kind of a feel. So two notes in a whole bar of 4-4, four, four, and you can identify the drummer just from their time keeping, uh, you know, in, in jazz uh, abilities. And I guess we're done. I have gone over time and people are saying we have to stop now. So thank you all so much for your questions. And uh, if you didn't get in tonight, uh, I'll be here again. And, uh, you know, anytime I'm free, I'm happy to do this for you guys. So uh, just uh, log in to Drum Channel with Thomas and, and Greg Bissonette, who can teach you so much and is a wonderful guy and really funny. And uh, Chad Wackerman, who are, you know, who's covering all his uh, Murray Spivak chops and his Zappa chops and his perfection. And, uh, you know, me for aspects of music to try and make you a more musical drummer. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I hope I can help you again soon.